Consider a steam power plant. The feed water must be converted to steam before it can turn turbine and generate power. This is usually done in a boiler where the heat from the hot burning gases is transferred to the water. After the steam has expanded to the turbine, it must be condensed to liquid water before it can be pumped back into the boiler. This is accomplished by a condenser where cooling water cools and condenses the exhaust steam. One thing that both boiler and condenser have in common is that there is a transfer of heat between two fluids without them mixing. These devices are referred to as heat exchangers and are very commonly used in the industry. And it is the focus of this lesson. So let's get started. Heat exchangers are the devices that facilitate the exchange of heat between two fluids that are at different temperatures while keeping them from mixing with each other. They are used in a wide range of applications. From heating and air conditioning systems in a household to process industries and power plants. Heat exchangers are often given specific names to reflect the applications for which they are used. For example, a boiler is one in which the fluid absorbs heat and vaporizes. A condenser is a heat exchanger in which one fluid is cooled and condensed as it flows through the heat exchanger. Or a space heater where the heat is transferred from a hot fluid to the air surrounding the device. Heat exchangers can also be classified based on the flow arrangement and type of construction. The simplest heat exchanger is a double pipe heat exchanger that consists of concentric tubes in which the hot and the cold fluid move in the same or opposite direction. If the fluids are moving in the same direction, then we would get a temperature distribution as shown here. This configuration is known as parallel flow heat exchanger. Now on the other hand, if the fluids move in the opposite direction, then we would get this temperature distribution and the setup is commonly referred to as counterflow heat exchanger. The two fluids can also move perpendicular to each other. This flow configuration is known as cross flow. Cross flow heat exchangers are further classified as finned and unfinned heat exchangers. Fins are generally added to increase the total surface area available for heat transfer. The plate fins force the fluid to flow through a particular interfin spacing and prevent it from moving parallel to the tubes. And as a result, the flow is considered to be unmixed. On the other hand, in the absence of these fins, the fluid is free to move in the transverse direction and is said to be mixed. Now, as you might expect, the nature of mixing significantly influences the heat exchanger performance. Some common types of heat exchangers used in industrial applications are shell and tube heat exchangers, plate heat exchangers, and finned tube heat exchangers. Shell and tube heat exchangers contain a large number of parallel tubes packed inside a shell. Heat is exchanged as one fluid flows through the tubes, while the second fluid flows outside the tubes through the shell. Baffles are placed in the shell to force the shell side fluid to flow across the shell and enhance heat transfer. It also supports and maintains uniform spacing between the tubes. Shell and tube heat exchangers can be further classified according to the number of shell and tube passes involved. For example, this configuration here represents one shell pass and two tube passes. And this one represents two shell passes and four tube passes. Plate and frame heat exchangers or simply plate heat exchangers consist of a series of plates with corrugated flat flow passages mounted in a frame using a screw press. 
hot and cold fluids flow in alternate passages and thus each cold fluid is surrounded by two hot fluid streams, resulting in a very effective heat transfer. This heat exchanger is well suited for liquid to liquid heat transfer if the two liquids are at similar pressures. Moreover, this configuration can easily grow with increasing demand for heat transfer by simply adding more plates. Finned tube heat exchangers have tubes with extended outer surface area or fins to enhance the heat transfer rate from the additional area of the fins. They are normally used in applications involving heat transfer between air and a liquid where the heat transfer coefficient is much higher on one side of the heat exchanger than the other. Another commonly used heat exchanger in the process industry is a regenerative heat exchanger or regenerator. It involves the alternate passage of hot and cold fluid streams through the same flow area. Heat from the hot fluid is intermittently stored in the thermal storage medium before it is transferred to the cold fluid. To accomplish this, the hot fluid is brought into contact with the heat storage medium. The fluid is then displaced with the cold fluid which absorbs this heat. Now that we have some understanding of different types of heat exchangers, let's try to understand how they work and how they can be analyzed. Any heat exchanger typically involves two flowing fluids separated by a solid wall. Heat that is being conducted by the hot fluid is conducted through the wall and then convected again by the cold fluid. Flow on either side of the heat exchanger is usually complex and local properties vary from one point to the other. Therefore, in the analysis of heat exchangers, it is convenient to work with an overall heat transfer coefficient that accounts for all the contributions of these effects on the heat transfer. You can think of this as a lumped parameter describing the overall efficiency of the heat exchanger. It is one of the main specification of a heat exchanger that is provided by a manufacturer or a customer when they place an order for a custom heat exchanger. For a double pipe heat exchanger, the thermal resistance of the tube wall is given by this expression. We can now get the total thermal resistance between the two fluids as shown here. Now we can express the overall heat transfer between the two fluids using this simple expression where u is the overall heat transfer coefficient given by this relationship. Another thing to keep in mind while considering the long-term performance of heat exchangers is the accumulation of deposits on heat transfer surfaces over time. The layers of deposits represent additional resistance to heat transfer and causes the heat transfer to decrease. The net effect of these accumulations on heat transfer can be accounted by using the fouling factor RF, which represents the thermal resistance introduced by fouling. Fouling can occur due to scaling or precipitation of solid deposits, corrosion, or even due to the formation of algae on the surfaces over time. Therefore, fouling should be considered in the design and selection of heat exchangers, especially for applications where it is likely to occur. Now perhaps you are wondering why we have two overall heat transfer coefficients UC and UH for a heat exchanger. This is because every heat exchanger has two heat transfer surface areas AC and AH, which in general are not equal. For example, Consider the case where one side of the tube wall is finned and the other is not. The surface area of the fin side will be several times that of the unfinned side. We can now write the overall heat transfer coefficient including the fouling and the fin effects like this. Here, eta0 represents the overall surface efficiency of a fin surface and is given by this expression. Using the heat transfer analysis for extended surfaces, it can be written in this form. This brings us to the end of this lesson.